Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this Wednesday workshop installment by the University of San Francisco. Today, we're excited to welcome Professor Constance de la Vega, the director of the LLM programs in international, international Transactions and Comparative Law. We're also joined by Associate Director Julianne cartwright Trailer. As always, I'm Olivera Yovanovich. I'm the director of the LLM and Master's programs. And um, we work to admit and um, advise students on various aspects of the application process and about LLM programs through these series. So every other Wednesday, Julianne and I, along with various uh, guests will discuss different aspects of the application process or different aspects about the LLM program, whether it's how to select a program, uh, the visa process will come later in the year as well too. So we do hope that you continue to join us throughout the year on this endeavor. With that, I'll turn it over first to Professor De La Vega to introduce herself, and then I'll ask Julianne to, int to introduce herself as well, and then we'll get into the actual presentation. Professor De La Vega? Okay, thank you, uh, Oliveira. It's um, uh, great to be here. And I'm sorry, but my ca camera keeps moving. And so I keep trying to get it to to to, to work, but it's not, it, it won't stay in place. Sorry. Um, so I'll go just, I'll just go ahead. So I, grew up, I grew up in Mexico, mostly in Mexico City, but I was able to, uh, but I spent three years in the very small town of Metepec in Puebla. I went to college in, in Southern California and law school in Berkeley. I worked at, le at legal aid programs for 10 years and then supervised law students in one of their programs. Uh, uh, and then I came to um, USF and started out by su supervising students in the civil litigation clinic. Um, after 10 years, I started teaching the American Legal Systems class and I also teach the International Human Rights Clinic and class. Uh, have, have been teaching that uh, uh, since then as well. Um, in the clinic, I supervise students who attend the UN meetings in Geneva and in New York, and uh, they actually participate uh, in the actual meetings by making oral presentations and by uh, working uh, to get language into resolutions. I have uh, filed amicus briefs before the US Supreme Court and the, where the US Supreme Court has cited the international law that I filed in, in uh, the, the brief. And um, the issues uh, that, that I worked on in those is the, in the juvenile death penalty. Um, I've worked on a number of other issues as well. Um, and I also have filed international briefs in front of other courts as well. Perfect. Thank you, Professor De La Vega. Uh, Julianne, may I ask that you take a minute to introduce yourself as well? Hello, everybody, and thank you for participating in our Wednesday webinar series. My name is Julianne Cartwright Trailer. I'm Associate Director of International LLM visiting scholar and international student exchange programs here at the University of San Francisco School of Law. I've held this position for more than 15 years now. I am, uh, by way of training, I am uh, a government major as an undergraduate. And as a graduate, I um, got my degree in political science with advanced studies and training in the US and abroad in international human rights law and gender and development issues. As part of my professional background, I was a visiting scholar at the International Peace Research Institute in Oslo, Norway for five years. I've been a consultant for the United Nations on international human rights issues. I've held leadership roles in a number of major non-governmental organizations such as Amnesty International, um, human rights advocates, the Women's Intercultural Network, and I've led official uh, delegations to UN meetings in New York, Geneva, Durban, South Africa, and Beijing, China. And um, currently, I am an official accredited non-governmental organization 
uh, representative uh, for human rights advocates at the UN. My role here at USF uh, consists of marketing, recruitment, helping our uh, applicants through the application process, enrolling students, advising them while they're here, and working with them after they graduate as alums. Um, and so it runs the gamut uh, from um, messages like this, programs like this, until there are alums. So um, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you both for taking the time to be with us. I know it's, it's early in San Francisco, so we appreciate you very much. Uh, at this point, Julian, I would like it if you could maybe give our um, attendees a brief overview of the of our LLM program in international transactions and comparative law um, with an eye to how uh, things work generally for LLM programs just for a few minutes, and then we'll turn it over to Professor De La Vega to speak specifically about some of the aspects of, of our program that she is uh, most intimate with. Okay, thank you, Olivera. So um, I'll be using um, ICL to shorten international transactions and comparative law. So this is more or less a general uh, LLM program. Um, we have uh, students, who come for uh, nine months, it's a nine month program, and they take the 25 to 30 units to get their degree. The only required courses in the ICL program are the American Legal System One and American Legal Writing and American Legal System Two. And Professor De La Vega will talk more ab ab about that. So it's a, a, a general program, and there are some core courses uh, like uh, uh, international human rights law and international business transactions, but most of the, the courses are electives. So you can take classes in environmental law, immigration law, um, um, health law, um, securities regulation and exchange, election law, energy law, so that it runs the gamut, whatever you want to focus in, uh, in terms of taking those elective classes. So as I said, it's a nine month program, 25 to 30 units. And within uh, that, you can also do what we call uh, curricular practical training. And you can do that either your first or second semester, and you have a placement for example, in a law firm. And so you can uh, work in that law firm um, for a number of hours per week. Also, our students can, some of them want to take a bar exam, either the New York bar or the California bar. So you can take courses that are tested on these bar exams as part of your LLM program during those, those nine months. So this uh, gives you um, an uh, overview of the classes that we have. And um, uh, our students can also, after they do their nine month program, if they want to get more legal practice after their LLM degrees, they can do what we call optional practical training. And what they can do is they can extend their visas for a whole year and uh, get a, a work permit and they can work full time during that year in a law firm, a corporation or a nonprofit. So that, I think that gives you an overview of uh, the classes and the ICL program. And um, I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Carney de la Vega to talk about uh, practicing ICL law in the Bay Area and to talk about the required courses, especially the ones that she teaches, um, and um, talk a little bit about the clinical opportunities that we have for our students. Professor De La Vega. Okay, thank you. And again, I apologize for my camera. I keep, they just keep slipping. Um, so I teach the American Legal Systems class, uh, which covers the basics of American legal, uh, the American legal system 
with a discussion of on the common law, the use of cases and citations. So you get the basics of uh, how to use US law uh, in this class. We cover uh, the American um, federalism, the, si the situations of the, the, the judicial system, including the, pu the publication and citation of judicial opinions and other authority. Uh, I, uh, in addition to co covering a judicial interpretation of legislation, the class uh, covers doctrines of what uh, the use of uh, the various roles of, of how to uh, uh, interpret legislation under the constitution. I also cover specific topics such as property rights and the right of privacy in, in the class. Uh, we also cover the use of international authority in the classes in, in the class as well. During the two semesters, we make visits to the California Supreme Court, to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is in the federal system. Um, and then we observe a jury trial uh, that usually in the spring semester and visit San Quentin prison, uh, where the prisoners give us a tour of the prison and it's a very uh, interesting uh, visit uh, and, and enlightening on, on a lot of different levels. Um, the learning objectives of, of the class and these various uh, issues I've discussed are to learn about the aspects of US law, as well as learn how to uh, write short papers. One of the things we do in the, in the initial, in the first semester class is to write short papers about the visits to the courts, and then um, uh, that that helps me give you input into the into the writing um, uh, uh, organization and uh, writing uh, things um, like that. Um, in the spring semester, the the ALS class focuses on research and writing and. Uh, and, and, and so that is another aspect of the, of the class as well. And that, and that is when we go visit the, the jury trial and, the, and San Quentin. Clinical opportunities at USF include the Frank C. Newman International Human Rights Clinic, where students get to participate at the, at the Commission of the Status of Women in New York and the Human Rights Council in Geneva. Uh, you, the student, each student only does it uh, one or the other. They can't do both. Uh, students prepare papers that become part of the official documents for the for the uh, meetings, and then they also prepare a longer report to help support their advocacy uh, while they're at the at the meetings. Uh, the, they also have a chance to part to make oral statements before the entire body and uh, participate in the drafting mission, uh, meetings of the, draft, of the resolutions um, at, both, at both of those sessions. Um, and that can include talking to delegates and, um, and also we, we also have sometimes students talk before the whole meeting regarding uh, our, 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 our suggestions regarding the language of the resolutions that we're uh, participating in. Um, so that's the overview, and if anybody has questions later, I can answer those. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Professor De La Vega. We do have some questions uh, that tend to come in from time to time, and we did have an opportunity for students to pre-submit questions. So let me start with those, and then we'll open it up to, to the general questions. Um, one question that we, we get, and I'll give this to Professor De La Vega, is how do students really experience, it's one thing to study the legal system, but how do they become more immersed? How do they get more involved with the legal system while they're at USF? Well, I, th I think that that's the, our goal with the visits to the courts. They actually get to go see the courts in action. So we, we our first visit is to the California Supreme Court, which is the highest court in, Sa in California. And uh, we have someone who prepares uh, the, the students before we attend so that they know what the cases are about. 
And so then we at, at, uh, attend the, the court uh, uh, session regarding those cases and uh, observe the both parties making their arguments and responding to questions of the, uh, of the justices. Wonderful. And I know that in uh, addition, I think you mentioned the California Supreme Court, there's also the Ninth Circuit, the visit to San Quentin. So there are a lot of opportunities for our students to, uh, and a jury trial in the spring, um, to understand how what they're learning in the classroom actually plays out in, within the US legal system. Mm -hmm. that's, that's wonderful. Um, the next question we get, and Julian, I will ask you to, to field this one is, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what alumni from the program are doing today? Where are your alumni? Okay, so a number of we call them alums, alumni have uh, uh, taken the International Human Rights Law Clinic with Professor De La Vega, and they all uh, tell us about the research and analytical skills that they were, were able to work on, the, their writing skills, the legal knowledge that they gained, the oral advocacy and presentation skills that they had, the professionalism and the work habits that they um, worked on during their time in Professor De La Vega's clinics. And so with that said, let me just give you an idea of, of some of our uh, alums and we hear from them um, very often and I'll sort of go through some of the ones that I've heard from recently. Um, some in Germany, for example, who are partners in uh, big law, what we call big law firms. We have some, um, uh, for example, some of our uh, Czech scholars who are in the banking and finance and some of them have taken bar exams like the New York bar. And so they are associates in firms in their home, own countries. We have others who have gone back um, to their countries and um, they have worked in firms. Um, some have become judges. And we have one now who went from being a, a judge in Bavaria. He's now in Brussels at the European Union representing his government there. We've had uh, others, for example, from Latin America who came and they were in the clinic and uh, now they're back in their home countries working, for example, with the United Nations Development Program. Uh, we have others who've gone back into their country's diplomatic corps, and some of them are here in, one is here in San Francisco uh, uh, as a consular official for her home country. We have others who have been in the clinic uh, for example, and who have gone back to their home countries, they've been interns remotely with international non-governmental organizations. They have gone back to Geneva where they have worked with the UN uh, High Commissioner for Human Rights. And now they're working with a, uh, a major non-governmental organization in Nepal. We have others from Africa, for example, one of our um, Fulbright scholars who is now um, a senior manager in corporate law for the African Export Import Bank. So you can get an idea of the, the gamut of what the students are doing. And some are actually still here in the Bay Area practicing law. We have partnerships with various schools like Charles University in Prague, uh, East, uh, East uh, University of Political Science and, and Law in Shanghai, China the City University of, of uh, Hong Kong, the University of Luxembourg. We have um, partnerships with them. We have partnerships with law firms such as Unitalan and Wahuda in um, China. And I hope that that gives you an idea of what some of our alums are doing. And they're very important um, in our community here. They were very active here and they're still active in terms of representing uh, the LLM program uh, of the University of San Francisco. Thank you, Julianne. Um, the next question I'll give to Professor De La Vega, um, which is, uh, what is your favorite memory? What experience do you most look forward to as you interact with the students as their advisor and professor as we're coming up on 25 years of the LLM program? 
Well, one of the things I've always enjoyed about the, the uh, program is that not only do I, in, I enjoy sort of t uh, telling uh, students about how our legal system works, but I also in the process learn about how their legal systems work. So one of the things that we often talk about is how the, how the two, how systems in other countries in our, and in the US work. And as a result, we are, are both able to um, sort of learn about each other and use that process to learn so the basics of what goes on with um, uh, in legal systems and what, what their goals are for, uh, what they accomplish. And so having that comparative aspect really helps to uh, learn about how uh, systems work and should work. Thank you, Professor De La Vega. Um, all right, Julianne, it, this is the question I think you might be able to answer. As we are getting into the application cycle and students are preparing to apply and then to start uh, possibly next fall, what advice do you have for LLM students in their prep prospective LLM students and their preparations for the application and degree program? Thank you. And indeed, we always get that, that uh, question because students are, are really anxious to um, um, get the process going. Um, I say prepare early. And those of you who are on this webinar are, are starting this process early. Um, do your homework, do your research to figure out what you actually want to study as part of your LLM program. What do you want to focus on? And then do your homework to see if um, you can find a good fit for what your goals are. And um, hopefully, um, once you've heard what we have to offer, you'll decide to um, apply. But do start early. Um, keep communicating with us throughout the application process. Um, um, when I get email and people say, I, I hate to bother you, but, and then they have questions. We say, it's not, that's why we are here. Um, and we will give you information about setting up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session with us to answer your questions. So keep communicating with us. There are two ways you can apply, either through the Law School Admission Council, LSAC, or you can apply to us directly and we will tell you how to, how to um, do that. We can give you a waiver uh, if you apply either way, an application uh, fee waiver. Um, and so do that. And with our um, applicants, and um, once you apply and um, um, we admit you in our admit letter, we um, evaluate all of our applicants for merit scholarships. So I know some of you might have that as, as a question. We do have that, uh, the merit scholarships. And if we admit you, when we send you the admission letter, we will have the amount of scholarship in that letter. And so once you do that, then we can start the other process. Those of you who need visas, we can start that. Um, so this is the process. Um, do keep in contact with us. And then we send out uh, pre-orientation materials that you can go online and see and review and ask us um, questions. And so once you do that, um, and we have um, other webinars that we can send to you that talks about letters of recommendation, that, that talks about scholarships, that talks about um, um, other parts of the application process. So we do that. And those of you today, generally after these webinars, we get email from people who want to do one-on-ones and we really welcome that. So that you go through, through all of that. And then once you get here, I know we're talking about preparing for the program, but once you get here, um, we just advise you um, to take advantage of being here with the student organizations that that we have with that we the networking opportunities that that we have um, here for the the students um, the in class experiences the clinics and we also do have fun um, as uh, uh, students yeah 
So we have a question that's come in from one of our attendees and I'll ask either or both of you if you want, if you have any thoughts to share on, on this question. So a prospective student is asking, do they need to know what they want to focus on before enrolling in an LLM program? And so I'll open the floor to either of you. Okay, well, um, general, generally you and I are the first line of communication of when um, students are trying to figure out their programs. And so that's part of the one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, sessions that we have with them, just to see what they're interested in, and then to tell them specifically about our two programs, the Intellectual Property and Technology Law Program and the International Transactions and Comparative Law Program. And we generally talk through that um, in terms of what they're interested in. And then they decide because the intellectual property one is more focused, they're more required courses than the, the comparative one. And so some know exactly that they want to do IP law. Others are not so sure, but we tell them with the ICL program, it's a broader one. And even within that, if they are partially interested in IP law, they can take intellectual property courses. So we usually go through that process while they're applying so that they have more of an idea. But um, in certain instances, in a few instances, once they have arrived, then they, they've said, um, uh, no, I wanna switch programs and stuff. And, and they're, able, they're able to do that. But generally uh, during the, the process leading up to uh, actually enrolling. We have those types of conversations and um, we have them speak with uh, Professor um, Connie De La Vega also um, about the, the ICL program and uh, our academic director of the IP program so that we can work that out. If I, if I can just briefly talk about, um, uh, sorry, my camera keeps no, slipping okay. here. If I can uh, talk about what each of the students will be assigned to either the IP program or the comparative law program, and then they will either meet with me or, or the other professor and I so I have a meeting. <coughs> with each student about what they're interested in I go over the classes that are available and uh, and and then we try to put together a program that, first of all, sometimes the classes. Uh, uh, don't you know are are conflicting? So I put I help the student put together a program that is viable for them um, during the semester uh, and that goes along with their interests. Um, they they can, as Julianne said, uh, change uh, from IP to comparative law, but comparative law is includes a lot of different topics, and so the big issue there really is what to focus on as as opposed to um, you know, what to focus on in a broad variety of case of classes. Absolutely. Well put. Thank you both. Um, I want to be mindful of time, and I've been able to answer some of the other questions in the chat that are more administrative. For our attendees in the chat, I've dropped the link to make an appointment, as Julian has mentioned. On the screen, you'll see our contact information. Um, so I encourage you to reach out to us. What I'm going to ask now is I, uh, I'll start with Professor De La Vega if there's any other final parting words you'd like to share for prospective students, and then I'll turn it over to um, Julianne to do the same before we wrap up for the morning. Okay, well, I think uh, the, the overview that I want to give is that we have a, a wide variety of, of, of options available to you, and we are doing this in one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, we have a few events where we actually uh, can take advantage of being here. Um, we sometimes go visit Professor Riley, who um, started this program and who has this beautiful house on the ocean. And so if we're able to go visit him, the students really love uh, going and seeing the, the, uh, the, the Pacific Ocean. But we're very close to the Pacific Ocean anyway, so that's always an, a viable option. So I think in the in the midst of this beautiful city, we've got this great program um, with a lot of different uh, possibilities for study and um, and hope that you will come and join us here. 
I think Professor De La Vega, you said that wonderfully. It's one of my favorite things to tell students is that you have, because of our location, you have all the advantages of a large city, all the networking, the outdoor activities, the professional activities, the scenery, and then you also have the benefit of a program which you described where you meet with students, uh, Julianne meets with students, I will meet with students where there's uh, an intimacy and a support level that is really unique to University of San Francisco. So thank you for sharing that. That was, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, Julianne, any parting words? Well, I, I, I totally agree with the two of you all. We always have very diverse uh, LLM classes. Uh, each year with students coming from all over the world on all different levels, some newly uh, graduated from law school, others who've been out practicing, to some who are professors and senior partners in, in their firm. So it's very um, diverse. And um, the location, location, location of San Francisco. And we are so fortunate that uh, when we do these court visits, it's a bus ride right downtown. Um, and with Silicon Valley um, um, down the peninsula, but Silicon Valley here in San Francisco with all of the, the financial institutions and the, the IP firms and what have you, and the contacts that, that each of us has and, and other professors, and you have professors in your classroom who are high up in various firms and so that um, networking. And this is how our students find their, uh, if they wanna do optional practical training, this is how they make their connections so that they can spend an additional year here. And um, I, I second what they've said, please contact us and we will help you through the, the application process. And we hope to welcome you here in person in San Francisco in August of next year. And thank you for participating in today's webinar. Well said. Thank you both so much. Thank you to our attendees. Again, our emails and uh, phone numbers are on the screen, although I would suggest email. There's still a small amount of uh, remote work during this uh, COVID era. And then uh, you have the link in the chat for our appointments. So um, thank you all so much. Ah, one thing, a question that just came up and it is an important one. So I will answer it real quick before we wrap up. Scholarships. The admissions committee will review every applicant for a merit-based scholarship automatically. We do not require that you submit an additional form. Uh, we will look at your application uh, holistically, which is why it's very important. And I encourage you to join us for our webinar on personal statements. You can email us for a recording of the one on letters of recommendation, because those application components, your transcript and grades, your TOEFL score, um, your CV, your application itself, the whole uh, package is what we'll, we will use to make a scholarship decision, and we will uh, let you know about the scholarship amount in your ad admission letter. Um, we will talk probably more about uh, scholarships in some of our other webinars, but we're happy to also answer questions if you want to shoot us an email about that. So with that, I will thank our panelists and for their time. And um, we uh, look forward to uh, chatting with all of you further. All right.